Hi guys, so as Eva mentioned, I really like technical gadgets, technical toys, which I'm buying, and then I have a problem with selling them, so uh, now I have a new one, which is the smartwatch now, which I'm testing because, at, as I'm saying, the testing is a passion for me, so now I'm just checking, for example, the my heartbeat, and which is like 70, so it's not too bad, and of course the uh, buying any of the gadgets and getting more and more in my house it's a nightmare for my for my wife so okay by the way i would like to uh, present today how to automate visual testing um at the beginning i will just maybe ask a question how many of the of you are here is have experience in creating the automated test scenario in excelenium for example can you raise your hands okay so there's a lot of people um, so I would like, during my presentation, uh, in a very quick way, and using the very simply test scenario written in the Selenium, uh, just to show you how we can easily automate the visual testing and how it's uh, using, just, using just one method, putting in the code, we can just compare the results, compare the, the screenshots. So just going through the agenda, what I would like to show you today is that starting the visual testing, what does it mean? Uh, how to automate tests, so how to start, where to begin, uh, what are the tools that we can use for it, um, how we can use the methods, put in the code, how we can then re uh, check the results, analyze it, and also we would like to, um, I would like to show the other options because there are a lot of tools now that we can, um, get to our project. I think that it's more than 20. So I would the key thing and the key tool that I will focus today is the, the Apply Tools Eyes, which is the Eyes library that you can add to your tests, I mean to the Selenium web driver. So it's the Eyes SDK, which is a uh, very simple one, I think. And also I would like just to, in the few words, just to compare and show that there is uh, other differences and other option. I would like to present that there is a Galen framework, which is the different one than the Apply tool size. And then we can just go through the questions and, and answers. So visual testing, I don't want just to say the definition, but in our testing life, then we are just in the project, we are just checking the user interface uh, very often on the different devices, on the different browsers, because as we know that uh, that the web application that we are testing, it's not really same on, for example, the Firefox. It's not the presented same in the Firefox the same way. Uh, as as you know, we had uh, more many problems with the Internet Explorer before, that everything was different and the UI was different and all the layout was different on for the for the customer so visual testing is also checking the content on this on the pages so what we are just showing to the people what you are showing to the customer it is valid thing or not it's also validating the layout of the page and as i as i said it is also uh, it's cross it's cross devices testing so many of the application is is used by the customer not only using the desktop but also the very popular is the mobile ones now so it it will be also working for both devices there are a lot of advantages of automating the visual testing not only the visual testing but as you know that also automation is a big benefit for uh, for our test and what we are just delivering to the client and uh, how the quality looks for it so it's incredibly fast. Yeah. So, uh, in the visual testing, that we don't need to use. I, I, I'm not saying that we are not using our brains, but we don't need to spend a lot of time. I think, which is many times, the very time-consuming, just to um, using our eyes check the validation of the page, check that the frames and everything is in the good position of the page, and everything is valid. So that's why it's 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 incredibly fast. It's also very flexible and is pixel perfect. So our eyes are cannot just check the pixel on the page that there is small difference and that tools can do that. Also, this is, uh, it's 
counting the risk of irregression testing. So if we have a automation, if we have a, a visual testing automated, there is a small risk during the regression time that something happened on our application. And the last sentence here, which is that one method could replace many lines of code, it's, it's the meaning of this line is that the apply tools eyes uh, using just simply one method can screenshot and check what is on the page presented instead of preparing a lot of lines of code in the Selenium web driver just to checking what exactly is on the page excuse me, and what is presented to the customer, to the user. So just some examples why it's most important, the visual testing, as you can see here, the frame is outside here, so it's not a good one. Going the next, we have a different logging pages. It's, it's a very small difference for us, yeah, because it's only that there is not presented the login and the password text here. And I don't know if you can see the difference between the second and the third one, because it is maybe more complicated, but here we have a frame outside here, and here we don't. So it's a very, very small uh, difference, but using the visual testing, we are, uh, we are able just to uh, find it. Some more other examples. So it's difficult to read what exactly is what exactly is saying here. Here we have a mobile application. We have a map, and there is a text presented, which is saying that there is a connection error, which is also a visual testing issue. And here we have a drop down menu drop down, and we have. A some digits, so some kind of calculator, and we are not able just here, for example, click second on third value, because we have a drop down from the from the top of the page. So, as mentioned uh, in the beginning of the presentation, that I would like to focus on um, the Apply Tools eyes. Um, so, I'm I will be using the Visual Studio. Of course, you can use other tools that you are using for your automation, for example, or creating the code. And Selenium WebDriver and the Apply Tools I. So make it together. We can just create a very simple test, which is showing exactly uh, the visual testing. Apply Tools I integrates with a lot of tools as a Team C oh, sorry, Team City, VSTS. Now it's VSTS, not the TF TFS. Jira, so it's a very simple thing just to put in the code, just the one line, and then we can integrate it with our things here. And also, uh, it's also integrated with any of the programming languages and the automation frameworks uh, from the web pages, for the mobiles, for the desktops. We are also able to, using that tool, to automate comparing the screenshots. So we can just put the path in the code and just ask him to compare and give us result of how it looks just to getting the pictures, not just going to the site, for example. How is the simply way, how it looks from the tester perspective? So here we have a tester, this guy on the left. So he using the Selenium web driver, such as I mean, such as Selenium, and he's simulating the user actions on the page, yeah, using the locators, using the methods. He's able just to show exactly how the process, how the business process looks on the page. So he's just clicking, sending the keys, putting some information. Then there is a call, an AS SDK API, to perform a visual checkpoint of the things that we put in the page, so the things what we just click it. And then it's sending the image to the ICE server, which is presented in the ICE test manager. So there is a tool when we can just log in and see exactly how the test looks, what was the difference, we can accept, we can reject them. So that's the very easy way showing how, the, uh, how this automation for the, for the ICE looks. Okay, so Starting from the beginning, uh, 
there is a very simple test scenario written in uh, Selenium web driver using the Visual Studio.net. Here is what we have. So we are creating the test class and the ten test method. We are just want to run this test on our Chrome home driver. This is the, our application driver. Then we have a URL. We can also put navigate to. We can also use that one. And it's presenting what's the URL, so when the test should go. Then we have uh, the next, the, the first method, which is find element. The find element on the page means that there's a locator that we would like to use. And there is a lot of uh, possibility. There is ID, which is the best one, I think. We can also use the XPath, CSS selectors, other things. So the first method is just s uh, sending the keys, so it's just clicking in the text button, uh, text field, and just in the Google page, and just putting the information, visual testing. And the next method, which is just locating uh, the element on the page using the, the XPath, is just putting the, uh, uh, is just clicking the search in the Google. So this is the button, the locator for the button on the page of the Google. And then, how to create the eyes? Eyes. How to just change this code from the very simple one as a Selenium one to have it and just put the visual testing. So first thing, we need to create the instance of the eyes in the class and put our IP key. The IP key we are getting after we register on the page. So it is per per user. So each of the user have a separate one. Which is the using, uh, and it's and it's n knowing the application that you have a permission to do that, and then it's connecting to this ICE test manager application using this API key because the ICE test manager application is by the website when you are just putting your your name and the password, and then he know exactly which tests are mapping with you the user, so that's why the API key is very important, and it's per person per user. Then we have uh, two methods, which is the open and close. So the first first method, which is the open one, it's uh, initializing the connection between our application driver and the ICE server. So as you can see here, we have uh, four arguments. The first one is our application driver, which is the Chrome. The second thing is the uh, name of the application. So this is a Google. We can see on the top of the side that we are in. Then we have a uh, name of the test. So the name of the test will be presented in our uh, ICE test manager application. And the last thing is the resolution of the of the test wi which we would like to uh, go. So then the l the the there is the, the close one. And the close is just saying that the test has finished. But the key thing in that is the method that we are putting inside between the open and close, which is the checkpoints that we would like to check. So there is a very simple method as uh, mentioned before. This is the check window. So this check window is just creating the screenshot of entire window here and sending into the ICE server. So it was also presented when we have a uh, tester on the page. And then this is uh, sending the screenshot to the our ICE uh, test manager, and it's comparing with the baseline. So it is a key method for us just to check this validation, visual validation of the page. So here we have uh, two checkpoints. The first one is checking the page, I mean the checking the Google search page, and just sending the screenshot of it. And the second one is after we put the visual testing in the text box and press search. Then we have uh, another window presented. And there is uh, information that this is a visual testing, the name of the window. And we also would like to check this, this one. Here we have an example of uh, how it looks in, uh, in this test manager, how the result lo looks after we run the test. So here is presented that. Uh, I can just use it. So on the left, we can see our tests. 
it depends how we just name them. So we have a name, we have a result here, and this pink color is is marking the the, dif the difference between the pages. So it's showing what exactly is different. So as you can see, the first one is the Google one. The second one is the word the visual visual testing. I will show it on the demo as well. And here, for example, when you're just trying to uh, compare s different pages and see that the tool is working in the proper way, you can just put different pages and see that if it should mark everything here in the pink that nothing is comparing, nothing passed here. Yeah. Okay, so let's go to the demo. Okay, so I have a solution here open, as you can see. And first, what I presented, uh, I'm just trying to. So the first test that I presented to you was the simply one, which is just going to the Google, searching for the visual testing and clicking. So I will run it and nothing should happen. Only this open the Chrome browser, open Google, type and exit and passed. And passed. Nothing happened. And the second one, as you can see, I can try to make it bigger, maybe. This one is with these changes. So here we have uh, added the eyes instance here. And we have our API key. We have our validation checkpoint one. We have a validation checkpoint two. So only those things I just added to the tests, to the Selenium test. So four things, if I remember. Let's let's run it. <coughs> so it's exactly doing the same. So there, there was no difference in the test scenario. Maybe some small performance. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, so now, after I run this test, I expect that when I log it to my Visual Test Manager application, I will see the result of, of the test scenario with the comparison of the, of the web page for the Google and for the visual testing. So let's go to this tool one. So here we have uh, our test scenario, which was run at 4.34, so I'm sure that that's the one that we run. Um, and it's unresolved. It's unresolved. It cannot be passed, because we should decide if anything changed on our baseline or not. And I if, if yes, we need to approve and change the baseline, then now with something new on the page, for example. And there is the unresolved status. And we can reject those, te those, those tests, or we can accept and say that it's passed. So we can see the result. So when we click here, I have some old one, the old baseline, just to show you exactly the difference between the pages. So here is the region in the blue that I just added, that please don't check that one. There is the button here. Is uh, at a region inside which differences should be ignored. So using that that, that option, we can just make on the our website and create the region that we would like to exclude 
from our checking on during our test. There is a, a very funny button, which is the highlight difference, which is clicking this, showing exactly where the difference are. If you are, if you, it's difficult to find them, but it's, I think it's easy to find them. So something changed in the text presented here, uh, the bottom of the page. Yeah. I can, f for example, delete this this one, and I can say now that this one, which we just run it, is the baseline now, is the new baseline. So let's approve it. And then it's moving us to the next step, to the next test, which is the result of the next of the second uh, website. The, the we have a result of the visual testing. And you can see the difference in the Google here and here. And there are a lot of difference in the result of searching in, in Google. So everything is marked here. Let's. And we can also, for example, just say that I don't care about that thing. run again. Okay, it's finished. So let's come back to our Apple Tool Eyes test manager. So I just say that we have a new baseline, and I approve the screen, and now it's so showing that nothing changed, everything is fine. On the second one, it's also checked the content here. What's the difference? The position, for example. But don't care about this Google here. I can also say that, OK, I, I'm, I don't want to check the content, what they are showing here. And just approve it and save. And run this again. I think that this option that is highlighting the the, oh, the area that we would like to ignore is very good for the dynamic things. They are still changing. Okay, let's go back there. That's a very strange thing. <laughs> so the screen still have uh, the website, the first website, not the second one. <laughs> and just as you can see, it's ignored. It's very funny. It's it's ignored only the area here on the Google on the Google website page. It's never have the situation to be honest. But we can run it again. I have a problems with the connection here before, so maybe that's not not that what that thing here.
so nothing changed here on the second website it checked that there is a difference in the time of searching the results and how many results we have here so we can just ignore the areas of the content and of the position that they are showing here all right going by the presentation so Apple tools can be integrated with the VSTS as I mentioned also it's a very simply way there is the mar marketplace on the VSTS that we can add the new feature there it's a free and using our continuous integration and deployment we can see exactly the result of the tests here so it is also showing the part of this test manager application here not the wall one but I think that the key things which is what passed what's unresolved that we have some uh, differences so when we just go to the up to the marketplace on the VSTS we are able just to to add it there is another tool Galen framework for example which is um, for the JavaScript application I mean from the selenium part of view so we can use it for the Java and JavaScript application but it's also based on the on the files that we can create the spec files the spec files is the file that you can uh, create uh, the information I mean the requirements of the page so this is like what's what are the acceptance criteria of the test of the of the our test and of the page that we would like to check so the Galen framework based on the spec file so we can create a spec file using the notepad and after we uh, after we installed the Galen framework on our computer we can compare it using the command line using the command line we can just say what the specs file we can we would like to use and on our specs, specs file we are able to describe exactly what's the size of the buttons what are the color of the buttons that we are want to check on our website uh, where they are on the on our site so as you can see here it's it's based on the how it looks and we are just creating that our for example button that it's named to search should be 10 pixels should be red and should be in the bottom of the page for example and then we can just compare it and just using the file uh, check the, the content as, as you can see here we have a application which can be presented on different devices so there is a tablet mobile there's a, a desktop application and we can also describe using this specs how it should looks on our our device which we are testing so when we testing on the desktop so we are saying that the first section should be above the second section the white should be 600 pixels for example uh, the second section should be aligned horizontally with the all three section so we have a uh, section two section three and section four visible there but for example from the mobile perspective we have a uh, first section which is above the second section but it's only aligned vertically left with the second section and it's a kind of test that we can uh, perform using the an example Galen framework which is a uh, checking the position of the our page the Galen also have a test report uh, but it is not like test manager that we have that we have for the Apple to size the very beautiful one that everything is, is showed it's the very simply here the HTML report that we can see how how it uh, how it looks how how was the what is the result of it there is also a uh, possibility just to check the heat map here but this is not the heat map that it's showing where the the guy was clicking but it's comparing the differences between what we expect and what we are what were the actual results it's the burning the difference in the in the page so our testing our visual testing it depends what the device we are using what the browser we would like to use 
and also the resolution of the screen. As you can see here, there are a lot of resolution. It depends if we, if the client and the customer is, is using mostly the, the TV screens, which is the biggest one, or the client is using the mobile, which is the smaller one. Still, we need to check if everything is showed okay in the, in the device. Regarding the heat maps, uh, I said that for the Galen framework perspective, it, it's not just showing exactly when the user is clicking. But there are also the heat maps that are showing where is the place where the users are clicking just to you know see exactly. And in the Google, usually is the first result of our search. So it's something interesting here. And also on the left, we can see the heat maps. There are a lot of links that showing the summaries and statistics on the web pages. They can uh, provide you information which browser and which device is the most popular one on the countries that you are uh, interested in. So you can see that each of the year they have a statistic of that. So you can, for example, check it with the customer when it will be used, which device they will be used. Um, also here is uh, on the GitHub, we have uh, our colleague from our company prepared. There is also Image Magic. Uh, there is one of the tools that using the code you can prepare the tests. Uh, and here if you want to, you can just check it and uh, see exactly how he created uh, a lot of lines of code just to compare the, the buttons and, and the uh, application. So that's all from my side. Thank you and now it's time for the final round of questions for today. Oh, that's a long one. What about the data solution confidentiality? Sending solution screenshots to the eyes test manager server can be problematic to some companies. Can this tool be used externally or it needs connection to the external server? Okay, so I, I, I understand this question. So it's all it's a public cloud for the when you are just using this, and I and I think that it could be a problematic for the customers, and uh, also the second problematic thing is that it's not free at all, but you can also uh, put here and buy your private private uh, cloud, for example the Amazon one, and put it there, so you don't need to use the the public so. I think that there shouldn't be a problem in that case. Okay, next question. In your opinion, what framework and what language is future-proof for visual testing automation? I think, uh, for, for from my perspective, uh, I have uh, experience in just Apple Tools Eyes, which I which we used, uh, and uh, I spent a lot of time with the guys that they uh, prepared those tools. And I think uh, this is the future, but I, I, I also know that this is not f for free. So just to uh, inform you, the free license of it is just for 100 comparison per month, but they don't presenting the price, how it, uh, what's the cost if you want to have, a mo have it more, you need to contact them directly. I know that the customers uh, sometimes want, wanted to pay for, for, for this because as we have, a, for example, testing pyramid is on the top of it, and it's very expensive, and it's not very fast as the unit test, for example. But I think that the future for, for it is uh, Apple Tools Eyes. I know that today was also the presentation with the other tool that they are still using internally, but they would like to uh, put it externally outside the company. So, yeah. Okay, next question. Does ICE work fine with parallel runs? Yes, yes, yes. The answer is yes. So we can, in parallel, uh, run the ICE on the different devices, on the different resolutions. So, yeah, the answer is yes. Your advice for people who want to start automated visual testing, which tool and language choose? It's difficult to me just to answer the question which language they should use because it depends what's the project and what they are using. As you, as you saw on the presentation, the Apple Tools Eyes works for, I think, the mostly all 
of the languages, the programming languages, and all of the automated frameworks. So it depends what are how you are developing the the page. It's uh, C sharp. It's the Java. You don't don't care of it because for each of the code, for each of the programming code, is very simply to use. So. Okay, we have time for one more question. So the final question is, how accurate IDE's tool is? Are there any scenarios where this tool doesn't work well? To be honest, uh, I don't know which of the scenarios it doesn't work work well. Maybe when you have a, a when you have a website that everything is dynamic, and when you're just opening the web, and every time when you're just opening and something different is showing to the to the people, I think that there is maybe waste of the time to using that that apply tool size because it will be uh, not given us a very good answer. So if we have a static things and we would like to check them in the regression many times, very so then yes, I think that we can then we can we should use. But for the dynamic things, I don't think that it's a good idea. Okay, that was the last question in this stream and during that conference. So let's give a big applause to Bartek.